For the first time in decades, two U.S. aircraft carriers sailed together in the eastern Mediterranean Sea, U.S. 6th Fleet announced Friday. Carriers U.S. Gerald R. Ford, CVN-78, and USS Dwight D. Eisenhower, CVN-69, drilled for three days in the Mediterranean Sea along with U.S. and Mount Whitney, LCC-20, and two Italian guided missile frigates. Operating dual carrier strike groups alongside allies and partners in a dynamic environment demonstrates our capability and capacity to respond with agility decisively to any contingency. Vice Admiral Thomas Ishii, commander of the U.S. 6th Fleet, said in a Friday statement, Our presence sends a clear signal about our commitment to deter aggression and promote stability throughout the region. The I Carrier Strike Group entered the region this week ahead of a planned transit to U.S. Central Command this weekend, a Navy official told USNI News Thursday. It will be the first time a U.S. carrier will operate in the Middle East since U.S. at Ronald Reagan, CVN-76, in 2021. The Ike CSG deployed on October 14 from Naval Station Norfolk, VA with the initial intention to relieve the Ford Strike Group that had been operating in the Mediterranean since June as part of the regional U.S. and NATO presence mission. The U.S. has maintained a carrier strike group in the region since December of 2021 ahead of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Shortly after the October 7 Hamas attacks in southern Israel, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin extended Ford's deployment and shifted the strike group to the eastern Mediterranean as part of the U.S. effort to keep the conflict from spreading. There have been 23 attacks on U.S. forces in Iraq and Syria, Pentagon officials said Monday. Deputy Pentagon Press Secretary Sabrina Singh told reporters that the number of attacks is an increase in an area that is familiar to clashes, but she did not say how much of an increase. Meanwhile, two ships bats an amphibious ready group, U.S. Bataan, LHD-5, and U.S. at Carter Hall, LSD-50, with the 26th Marine Expeditionary Unit embarked, have taken up station in the Northern Red Sea along with at least three guided missile destroyers. The third ship in the ARG, U.S. Mesa Verde, LPD-19, is in the Eastern Mediterranean. U.S. NI News previously reported that the last time there were two carriers simultaneously in the Eastern Med was in 2003 during the invasion of Iraq. U.S. Theodore Roosevelt, CVN-71, and USS Harry S. Truman, CVN-75, were launching missions from the eastern Mediterranean. In February of 1993, aircraft carriers U.S. John F. Kennedy, CV-67, and U.S. Theodore Roosevelt, CVN-71, and their escorts were operating in the eastern Mediterranean as part of the ongoing operation to enforce the no-fly zone over Bosnia. Not long ago in the Pacific, the U.S. Navy conducted dual carrier war drills wherein two aircraft carriers operated in close coordination with one another to practice executing a massive air campaign, something which verified that several integrated carriers together could double the sortie rate, dwell time over targets and geographical envelope of attack. With U.S. Ford and U.S. as White D. Eisenhower carrier strike groups both off the coast of Israel, the Pentagon is making it clear that it has the ability to operate a sweeping, massive, multi-warship air attack on Hamas or Iran if necessary. The dual carrier training mission in the Pacific was successful, as it enabled the U.S. Navy to ensure it could greatly scale and maintain a sustained air attack from the sea. It involved the U.S. Carl Vinson and U.S. Abraham Lincoln Carrier Strike Groups which conducted a range of maritime warfare operations, including anti-submarine warfare, naval replenishment, cross-deck flight operations, and maritime interdiction missions. The U.S. dual carrier exercise was quickly and not surprisingly copied by the People's Liberation Army, Navy, and it may have provided the confidence and conceptual framework for the Pentagon's current decision to place two highly lethal and likely integrated carrier strike groups in the eastern Mediterranean. Often thought of as a venerable symbol of American power and presence, U.S. Navy carriers have for years operated as an ultimate deterrent, meaning they certainly give potential adversaries pause when it comes to taking certain aggressive actions. The potential for an air campaign is massive, as each carrier can operate at least 75 to 90 aircraft, 
And one of the key takeaways from previous dual carrier exercises was that flight paths, launches and missions could be synchronized, staggered and coordinated to optimize attack duration and effectiveness. For instance, with two carrier strike groups capable of integrating and networking operations, the U.S. Navy could potentially operate two distinct yet large air campaigns simultaneously. U.S. Navy carriers could attack Hamas and Uran at the same time in a large-scale way should that be necessary. The operational deployment of the U.S. Ford brings yet another host of extremely significant variables as it is capable of a 33% increase in sortie rate beyond the Nimitz class. The largest advantage related to the dual carrier groups now in the Middle East likely pertains to fifth-generation aircraft. Of course, carriers and destroyers in the carrier strike groups to protect carriers can launch long-range precision attacks with tactical tomahawks able to change course in flight and use Aegis radar and SN-3s to stop ballistic missile attacks. But perhaps of greatest significance, they can each operate 30 to 50 F-35Cs if necessary. Given the ability of the F-35s to easily network with each other on real-time with multifunction advanced data link, NADL, U.S. Navy Maritime variant F-35Cs from different carriers could use the same command and control. F-35s could exchange ISR and targeting data with one another as well, a latency-reducing, target attack-enhancing circumstances. Now, alongside the well-known Pacific threat, two U.S. carrier strike groups are now projecting power in the Middle East in direct response to growing threats and escalations from Iran and its proxy forces attacking Israel. What kind of anti-ship cruise missile threat might Iran pose to the U.S. Ford and USS Dwight D. Eisenhower carrier strike groups now in eastern Mediterranean? Iran does produce several long-range cruise missiles of relevance to any possible carrier threat to the U.S. Navy in the Middle East. While they are primarily a threat for the Persian Gulf and Strait of Hormuz closer to Iranian coastline, it is realistic. They could also threaten Israel and portions of the eastern Mediterranean from Iran or its proxy attack locations throughout the region. The Chinese DF-26 reportedly hits ranges out to 2,000 miles and attacks with some precision. So how comparable are fast-evolving Iranian equivalents? An interesting research essay published by Iran Watch lists two new testing and possibly deployed long-range Iranian cruise missile, the Sumer and the Hoviz. The Sumer missile, which is estimated to operate at a range up to 3,000 kilometers, a distance which would hold U.S. Navy carrier strike groups at risk. The Hoviz is potentially more current as it is described as a variant of the Sumer family and capable of hitting targets out to 839 miles. Perhaps of greatest significance, the Hoviz is cited as a precision weapon able to use inertial navigation systems to hit targets to within as little as one meter of accuracy. This claim may or may not be true, yet INS technology of this kind does seem to exist. The Hoviz also operates in sea skimming mode like many anti-ship cruise missiles in order to fly below the radar aperture and avoid detection while en route to a target. How dangerous are these missiles? In order to be able to project power from the ocean over large portions of the Middle East, U.S. Navy carriers would ideally not want to be further than a few hundred miles off the coast so aircraft can conduct sorties within their operational range, have some dwell time over target and be able to return without refueling. There are still several key unknowns here, such as the extent to which Iran has its production and technological capacity to produce, maintain and upgrade these missiles. Are there large numbers of Sumors and what kind of arsenal does the Iranian military have? Perhaps most of all, what kind of guidance systems might the Sumer missile have? Can it track moving targets? Is there a level of precision? Does the Havaisa truly operate with a kind of INS precision out to ranges of 839 miles? It true, the weapon would appear to place U.S. carriers at risk from a number of Middle Eastern coastal locations of possible use by Iranian proxy forces. Regardless, there is a strong reason to think U.S. Navy carrier strike groups would be well positioned to destroy, defend against or simply stop incoming Sumors in flight. An F-35C, for example, is the longest range F-35 variant and can operate at ranges of 2,200 kilometers 
Roughly speaking, it would need to take off from a carrier less than 1,000 kilometers, 500 miles, offshore in order to attack and return without needing to refuel. Therefore, if Iran has long-range anti-ship missiles able to travel as far as 2,000 to 3,000 kilometers, then carriers launching F-35Cs might need to operate within their strike range in order to launch air attack missions, unless there were sufficient available refueling tankers. Using tankers, however, is not uncomplicated because, as large non-stealthy aircraft, refuelers would be quite vulnerable to enemy fire and possibly put fighter jets at risk as well. There are always a number of variables able to impact the equation regarding range and vulnerability, depending upon where fighter jets are planning to attack on land and how much time they need over targets. If large manned tankers too vulnerable, there could be the possibility of a carrier-launched unmanned MK-25 Stingray refueler drone, a more survivable and now operational drone tanker. There is a lesser-known part of this equation which might account for why the U.S. Navy remains clear that it can operate carriers wherever it needs to regardless of new or emerging threats. The reason is clear, improved ship defenses. The Chinese DF-26, for example, can hit ranges out to 2,000 nautical miles and, in effect, seek to make it impossible for U.S. Navy carriers to project air attack power within operationally realistic ranges. However, the Navy has always been pretty confident about its ability to operate carriers in a modern threat environment, and while adjustments to the threat and smaller, faster carrier-like warships are being explored by the Navy, big deck carriers are not disappearing anytime soon. One reason may be the effectiveness of lesser-known, yet increasingly high-tech layered ship defenses sufficient to address an anti-ship missile threat. Electronic warfare systems are increasingly able to jam guidance systems of incoming missiles. Ship-launched interceptor missiles are getting more precise, longer range, and capable of targeting attacking cruise missiles at safer standoff ranges and new defenses such as lasers are showing a growing ability to track and incinerate incoming anti-ship cruise missiles. Destroyers protecting carriers and carrier strike groups now operate with a new generation of ship protection technologies, the specifics of which are often not available for security reasons. U.S. Navy DDG-51 Arleigh Burke-class destroyers are now armed with lasers, improved range high-fidelity radar, upgraded interceptors, and a new generation of more precise electronic warfare technology called SEWIP Block the Lulai. Closer in interceptors such as CRIM, rolling airframe missile, and close-in weapon system have also been upgraded as well. There is also a lesser-known, yet already deployed ship defense system operational on Navy destroyers since 2015. It's called Naval Integrated Fire Control, Counter-Air. It is an integrated system which connects ship-based radar targeting technology with an aerial node or gateway, such as a Hawkeye surveillance plane or F-35 as a relay able to track and see incoming anti-ship missiles from standoff ranges beyond the horizon. This NIFCK system removes latency and massively truncates the time window with which a ship commander has to respond to a threat or decide upon an optimal countermeasure. Simply put, threats can be seen much more quickly and at beyond the radar horizon distances. In addition to just detecting an approaching threat, the NIFCK system also integrates an SM-6 interceptor missile which can be queued by ship-based command and control with target detail and then launch to intercept and destroy an enemy anti-ship missile from beyond the horizon ranges. 